let's take a look at a fairly new product that can help you reduce the risk associated with charging and storing LiPo batteries. LiPo batteries are one of the technologies that have driven the popularity of electric RC aircraft and cars. They're lightweight and energy dense. They do come with one serious drawback, however, and that's fire. LiPo batteries for modeling frequently come in light plastic cases for cars and heavy aluminum-like pouches for planes. When the chemical components inside the battery come in contact with the air, they burn rapidly, even without an ignition source. For planes, a rupture of the pouch is most likely caused by the result of a crash. In this case, a LiPo fire will likely be out by the time you get to your model. That's not to say that the model or the grass around it won't have ignited, however. The other common cause for pouch or case rupture is overcharging or overstressing the battery by pulling too many amps from it. In the case of overcharging, the most likely failure is having the charger set with the wrong battery chemistry or using fast charge chargers or charger modes which eliminate the balancing circuitry in most new chargers. Overcharging or overstressing the battery by pulling too many amps both cause chemical reactions in the battery that cause heat. When the accompanying pressure causes a rupture in the protective covering, a fire or explosive venting results. There are lots of videos of LiPo fires on YouTube and some are pretty scary. That's where the BatSafe comes in. BatSafe started out as a Kickstarter project. If you're not familiar with Kickstarter, it's a way to raise capital from interested parties who are willing to take a risk for a small contribution. In BatSafe's case, the reward was a BatSafe box for less than what they planned to sell them for. Now in production, the BatSafe box can be purchased directly from BatSafe or from retailers such as Hobby King. Others are listed on the BatSafe website. I ordered mine from the BatSafe site and was pleased when it showed up at my house a week later. It was packed in heavy cardboard and suspended in the shipping container with some foam corner pieces. The BatSafe comes with the BatSafe box, a detachable charger stand with Velcro strips, and a set of balance tap extensions. Let's take a look at some of the specifics. The BatSafe external dimensions are 9 by 12 by 7 inches, and its internal dimensions of the charging area are 9.5 by 6.5 by 4 inches. The box is made up of two steel shells with insulation between them. Most of the magic happens within the lid. It has holes on the inside and outside steel layers with what looks like fiberglass and steel wool or steel mesh sandwiched in between to act as a spark arrester and soot capture mechanism. Their website claims that the bat safe will keep the fire and soot in the safe while allowing the fumes and pressure to vent safely from the case. Pretty cool. Since I paid for my bat safe, I don't plan on intentionally causing a battery fire to test it. Sorry, I'll just trust the company's video. The last component we need to talk about is the rubber wire keeper that allows access into the bat safe for your charge leads and balance taps. The keeper fits very snug into the bat safe's lid. To get my wires through it, I removed one side of the keeper by pushing on the inside rubber edges around the lower seal past the metal lid opening using a common screwdriver and my fingers. Once past the edge, the keeper half came out pretty easily. There's a bit of an opening between the two halves for the wires to fit in, though at one point the top section of the keeper's molded rim closed off that opening, making it hard to fit the wires through. I sanded about two millimeters of the rubber away to provide just a little more space for the two charge leads and the two balance taps I wanted to use. 
Again, using the screwdriver to help press the wire keeper's lip past the edge of the opening, I reinserted the keeper with the charge leads through the lid. This is not something you're going to want to do often. Use charge leads and balance tap extenders that you can keep installed in the lid. As I mentioned, the bat safe comes with a set of balance tap extenders, but they stop at 5 cell leads. A better bet would be to get some extensions for a balance board with up to 6 cell sockets and use the balance board in the charging area. Boards and extenders are cheap. Just make sure to get a board that supports the type of balance taps used on your batteries. The other thing I did was to label both the charge leads and the balance taps on both ends since I plan to use two sets to be able to charge two batteries at the same time. That way, I won't end up blowing up a battery by having the charge lead connected to one charger and the balance tap connected to another. Another alternative would be to use a parallel charging board, though I've had mixed results with those. Let's do a quick demo of how you set up your battery safe for charging. So let's take a look at how we'd set up a battery for charging. First, we'll open up the bat safe. I've got a battery it needs. It's got an XT60 connector on it, and I don't have an XT60 charge lead, so I've put a, a XT60 to Dean's adapter on the end of it. We'll plug the battery in. Now I've got this adapter and it's labeled adapter number two. And so I'm going to look here on my charge boards and find the charge board for number two and plug it in to the balance tap. I'm just going to close it and latch the battery. In this case, we've got the stand up here at the top. I'm just going to take my battery charger, mount it to the stand. This end will go to my power supply. And then I'm going to grab number two, the ba uh, balance tap connector for balance number two. It's a six wire or seven wire six cell plug. So I'm going to plug it into the appropriate um, plug here. Then I'm going to grab my charge leads for number two. I've got them marked right here, and I'm going to plug that in, red to red and black to black. And now I'm ready to use the charger the way I normally would. I'd set the, uh, uh, the milliamp hours, the, uh, the cell count, uh, and get it to start, and it would all be charging there in the bat safe, nice, safe and secure, uh, without a worry of a battery failure causing a fire in the workshop. I'm all about safety when it comes to batteries, and the BatSafe seems to be an economical solution to reduce the risk associated with charging accidents or incidents. Like your home or car insurance, you don't need it until you need it. With any luck, I'll never find out if this thing actually works. If you found this review helpful, please click the thumbs up button for this video and be sure to subscribe to the rcplainviews.com channel to be notified when I post new videos.